Hey guys, today we're headed out to a uh, remote tank site on the west side. We've got a potable water system with a storage tank high up on a hill. And our remote SCADA system, our online monitoring, showed we lost radio communications with the tank this morning around 9 a.m. We've also been getting some funky tank levels being sent down to the main site. It's just a two site system, tank and pump site. Our main controller at the pump site senses the tank level and start and stops the pumps based on that. All right, we'll see you there. All right, upon arrival, everything seems to be looking good. We've got our steady blinking red light, which is a good sign. And every time it transmits, we get three full bars of uh, radio strength. It's set to only transmit, I believe, once a minute. And then my skater guy is seeing five feet in the tank. So we're gonna test the transducer and see what it's putting into the system. And then I'm also gonna generate a signal into the system and see if he can see the generated value. Okay, we got our Fluke 789 hooked up. We're showing 34%, about nine and a half milliamps. Sourcing using the 789 good on a 0 to 15 psi transducer you take 15 psi and multiply it by 2.31 that gives you your feet so it's about 0 to 34 feet give or take then you find 34 percent of that value that's 11 feet I don't know why he was getting five feet. I'm gonna check the fuse though. This fuse right here is what gives it DC power to the transducer. If that's blown, that could be an issue. And then I'm also gonna inject a four to 20 milliamp signal. Okay, now I've got my 789 in output mode, custom output mode. I'm pumping out 8.6 milliamps. We'll turn that back up to 9.5 where we were that's what our transducer was showing earlier and I've just got that fed in to my PLC here with some jumper wires and my alligator clips and the original transducer is just set aside so we'll go ahead and call our skater guy and see what he's seeing on the radio okay hey bro so I'm pumping in about 9.6 milliamps, 35 percent right now. Okay. And that is identical with what the transducer was giving me using my uh, 789. Okay, got it. And um, how long ago did you start? Maybe a minute or two. Interesting. Okay, because right now I'm seeing zero. Okay, there we go. So I'm seeing 4.9 on the tank level. Um, 4.9 feet, which is... Yeah, so, I, d I bet the transducer is a 0 to 15 PSI. Yeah, it's going to probably... 35% of that is about 11 feet, which is what... Which is exactly where the tank's at. Yeah. Can you put 20 milliamps in? Yep. Real fast, please. There's 20. Okay. It'll take a little while because there's the radio connection and then the internet connection. Yeah. Stand by. Um, but, yeah, it seems like we aren't getting an accurate level from our... From the tank. Down at the well. Yeah, and it, seem, it seems like the transducer is okay. Yeah, so I'd say the, the first step is we need to check what the raw value we're receiving is the PLC at the tank. I'll get my laptop out. Right. Have you gotten anything from that 20 milliamps yet? Yeah, it's at 27.7 feet. Yeah, I think something's and up with the scaling. Really, it should be 34, right? Yeah, if it's 0 to 15. Okay, so we've narrowed down. The transducer is working, or at least is putting out a good signal that matches the physical world. We've put in a signal using our signal generator and our SCADA guy is seeing the wrong value on the other end so we're going to look and see what this PLC sees based on what I feed into it and whether that's accurate or not or if there's something wrong with this analog input module. All right so I got my laptop out so now we're connected and then I want to see 
data. We have WX0 and WX1, I believe, is tank level. So we'll go down here into element, do WX1, and there's our raw value. So the transducer is taking the water level in the real world and converting it to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. Then that signal is brought down into this PLC and it measures the current in milliamps. Then it takes that and turns it into a raw value from 6,000 to, I forget how high. And then that raw value is what's transmitted between sites as the level that we're seeing. Um, I've, I'm still hooked up and generating. Yeah. It, uh, eight milliamps is only 7,500 raw value. Right, so that's wrong. And then what's four milliamps? It's, it pegs out at 6.5, around 7.3 milliamps. So at 7.3 milliamps, we're, what, what's the range on that raw value? 6,553 to 32,776. So 65 to 32, essentially. And so, yeah, right now we're bottomed out at 6,553. We should bottom out at 4 milliamps, but it's bottoming out at 7.3. Right. Does that so point to the... Is that the... A bunch off our signal. Do you think that's the module then? The actual analog module in the PLC? Yeah, probably. I mean... Um, what I'd like to do is check that the settings didn't get reset. Yeah, it's analog input 1, which would be WX1, I think. I mean, they're all set to 4 to 20. No filter time. The range is good. I think our next step then is going to be um, see if we can find another channel that is working that we can use. That we can move it over to. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I've taken my tank level analog input, which was on this additional module here, and I've moved it over onto the native analog input, WX0, that's built into the PLC. Uh, essentially, the power goes from our 24 volt supply out to our transducer or device, comes back from our device and up and into here. And then our common 1C goes to our 24 supply negative. Right now I've got those two wires hooked up to my milliamp tester generator so I can generate any value I want. So that is our raw value. See that there? Raw value with 12 milliamps. We'll drop it down to 4 milliamps. And there it is at 6.5. So it looks like this input is working. You can tell the difference with the other one. We were bottomed out. Our raw value bottomed out around 7.2 milliamps. Let's see our maximum value, 20 milliamps. And it's around 32, it's perfect. So it seems like the second channel, that first channel on the analog input module, over here, is not working for us. That's a bummer, but at least we figured out what the issue is. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is put the tanks transducer back online. Drop my tester first. And there you go, WX0 showing 15,000. So some quick math, 32, 32K, 32,000 minus 6,500. That gives us a total availability of 25,000. 
and then we're at 15 so 25 so then 15 really 15 5 minus 6 5 is 9,000 so we're 9,000 above 0 and our scale is essentially 0 to 25 so you take the little number divided by the big number 9 divided by 25,000 is about 36 percent which is what we saw when we first got here from the transducer so WX0 is showing 36 percent he should be seeing that tank level all right and one more thing now that we've made the change to the physical wiring we had to log in and make a slight change to the data output of this PLC this PLC is taking in all this information and then it's just writing it to a destination in our Modbus radio network. So because WX0 is no longer working, or WX1, excuse me, we had to move it down to WX0 and then we're going to ignore WX1. So now we're just using 2 and 3 for two other analog inputs we have at this site. And now we're newly using WX0 and then there's a fault bit that's written whenever the input drops below four milliamps that fault bit will change state so it looks like it was just a bad input the other two are working in that module just that first input wx1 right there has failed well that ended up not being a radio problem and then yeah so that was just really basic transducer testing or level sensor testing first i want to verify that it's got power there's no blown fuses then i want to take uh, all of the equipment that's there out of the equation. I want to see just what the transducer is doing. Uh, so I hook up my, I got a Fluke 789 process meter and it's just made for troubleshooting transducers and transducer circuits. I can hook it up to anything that's 0 to 24 milliamp range and it'll use its own internal power supply to tell me what the device is putting out. This is great because it rules out the power supply of the equipment I'm using. It rules out any computer or PLC that's interpreting that. It just shows me, hey, here's two wires coming from a transducer. Is it good? If I put that on there and it shows me zero, or it shows me a dead short or overcurrent, basically greater than 20 milliamps or 24 milliamps, I can assume relatively confidently that the transducer is shot. At that point, I like to look for any splices make sure there's no places in the circuit between the actual sensor and where I'm taking the reading that might be causing that issue. Usually though, they design them so that it's a straight shot from the transducer to where I test. Then the next step is I isolate the transducer from the system and I use that same 789 process meter to generate a healthy signal and I feed it in. And that's basically tricking the system into thinking that there's a transducer hooked up except I can change the level uh, manually as I so choose, however I like, up and down, just with little push buttons on the 789. And then what I can do is look at whatever we're using to monitor that level, whether it's an HMI or a computer somewhere, an online monitoring, or what we did in this case was we ended up hooking the laptop right into the PLC because we don't have an HMI to look at the value. So when you take a four to 20 milliamp into a PLC, the computer will convert that to a raw value from 6,500 to 32,000, from 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps. Then you can use math to turn that raw value into whatever you want. Inches, feet, um, GPM, pressure, anything you want. You can scale those numbers and, and derive some kind of meaning to them. The scale of the transducer is set in stone. Um, just with whatever or whatever device you have is set. This particular transducer has a zero to 15 PSI range. So four milliamps is zero PSI and 20 milliamps would be 15 PSI. If you want to find feet of water, it's 2.31 times the PSI. So it's about zero to 33 or 32, I believe, uh, feet of water. So, what we did, we hooked up our process meter. We saw it gave us a percentile of the of the total value of 4 to 20. It said about 35%. Okay, great. Then I hooked up my process meter and fed it into the system. 
and I just as a good place to start I injected what the transmitter was already saying 35 percent we injected that same percentile then we looked at the raw value on my laptop hooked right into that computer and the raw value was wrong it was as if a whole section of it had its legs cut out from underneath it and as I decreased that value we saw that it, when it got around 7 milliamps all of a sudden it pegged out to zero so because of that problem it wouldn't accurately show the tank level the next step is to just verify that that we can still get any analog input working is are all of the channels dead this particular setup the brx has come with one native analog input channel and then you can add a module on and each module will have i believe four analog inputs on it so we have five whole channels there we're using three currently so what we did was we moved over our tank level from the channel that it was on channel one we put it onto channel zero then I looked on the computer at the raw value and saw that channel zero is right where it needs to be, 35%, it's the right value, everything's looking great. Then the last step is to just change the programming so that, because right now the program is set up that channel one is tank level. And so our pump site is looking at channel one to show what the tank level is and decide whether to start and stop the pumps. So now we change the programming at the tank to say, no, that address, that uh, that place where you're reading tank level from, we want that to be written from channel zero now, WX zero. Once that change was made, I just confirmed with our SCADA guy, Josh, and uh, he texted me back, hey, we're seeing a good level, everything looks great. So now the system's back in automatic and everything's working. The other two channels we checked, they seem to be fine. It's a little unfortunate that one of the channels failed, but uh, you know, I don't know what else we can really do at this point, but keep an eye on it. and. Kind of repair it as it goes. We really love Automation Direct PLCs. They're very inexpensive, which is great for a lot of our customers. Right on, guys. See you on the next one.